refresh i did i didn't show Ooh, hi everybody night. welcome to the night crew show my name is buster is this the night crew? <laughs> yes just, oh, we lied yet. oh my god if you ask me one more fucking time for you go. <laughs> are we there yet <laughs> oh my god are we there, I am gonna are we there yet oh uh, why well, this is my last show you guys like you're supposed to be nice to me and shit <laughs> no this is your last show we have to we have to make it the most memorable show oh the one that where you just pull your hair out uh, i'm about I'm, I'm i'm right there so welcome everybody to my... show, but it's just like she's gonna move her down one panel <laughs> she's still gonna be here oh my god oh my god oh my god okay welcome everybody once again my name is buster destroyer and with me tonight from the night crew itself i have kyle barrett and gendor olap and then, not from the night crew, but a good friend of ours uh, is Mr. H.C. Vertigo. Do you like the way I said that? I guess. Okay. I suppose. If you insist. Vertigo. H.C. Vertigo. me liking that. All right. So, but again, guys, welcome. Um, I'll just kind of go around with each of you and ask you how you've been this week, how your week's been. Um, I'm going to start with Kai today, because I haven't seen him in a minute. Kai, how's your week been? How's things? Uh, things are good. Uh, you know, we get this whole new normal. We got the uh, triplets plus one, 3,600 square feet of house, and nobody can get along. Um, you know, there's this rumor that this is going to result in a huge boom, baby, uh, sorry, baby, baby boom. Baby boom. Yeah. Um, I'm oh, taking this the other way. This is going to yeah. result in a lot of divorces. and Me. A yeah, divorce. That's, that's how I think it's going to too. 
people have to spend more time with each other. They're going to find out they hate how much they hate each other. Oh my god, that's like I feel so... Like, I feel like, like so there will be a lot more sad. children. And well, I, I think some relationships are going to get really oh. strong. Goodness. Oh yeah. But other, I think other, some relationships relation, get better. other relationships you're going to realize like you don't that you were spending all your time at work to avoid each other. Right? Like I've definitely seen that, right? <laughs> and, Sorry, I hate it when my hand does that. But but unfortunately, unfortunately, those people who were spending all their time to avoid each other may still end up knocking each other up, trying to no, fix their relationship no. before they other. split. Each other up, like okay. Yeah, okay. Revere, yeah. thank you for the bits. I'm like hey, I'm a I'm a really really you know good with my words. So but we get you going, going. babies and divorce. Babies That's what's going to happen. Yes, come so out I, of this. Like yeah, I, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> In the Star Citizen world, uh, I've been streaming a whole lot, but I'm playing a lot. I can finally mm -hmm. land that oh, person awesome. with a regular ID. I don't have any problems finding the actual landing place. Um, earning lots of money. Very excited that they might not reset us with 3.9, mm -hmm. whatever that mm -hmm. makes. Cross their fingers. Um, looking forward to breaking into jails. Mm -hmm. Most <laughs> like that. I don't um, want to commit crime to get to jail. I'm yeah, going to break in. Break in. Yeah, <laughs> I'm going exactly. to go into the jail myself. Um, so, yeah, I'm really happy. When I played this game streaming, the only time I got to play was when I was streaming. And since I'm not going for a partner, it was only a few hours at a time. And when I said, okay, I need to take a break and started playing a lot, I said, okay, I get it. I know how to find an OEM, OEM now. Yeah. So it's been a lot of fun. There you yeah, go. I get these little nuances. It's not just finding it. It's these stupid nuances mm -hmm. um, that you guys who are partners and do it all the time just know how to do. Um, and once I didn't have to spend five hours trying to do a single trade mission because I knew how to navigate the universe, mm -hmm. totally different game. Yeah, no, it's it, I think there's something in Star Citizen that like it has a very steep learning curve. But once once certain things click, like it just it feels like a much smoother experience. Yeah, it's just it doesn't it, the Star Citizen does not explain itself very well. It's very unintuitive. And um we had a new we had a new new player. He just he just bought in a couple days ago and he started playing. Um, and we, we met up with him today. He was looking to try out some new ships, and we just had a hell of a time trying to do anything with him. Yeah. That said, so, it can't be this difficult. It has to be easier. They're focusing on a yeah. lot of stuff. I get that. Um, after they're done with Squadron 42 and whatever else they're going to do, like songs, mm -hmm. they really need to pass the gameplay. You shouldn't have to try yeah. this hard to find OMs to find mm -hmm. mission sites. No, the quantum system needs to be better. The yeah. star map needs to be hell of a lot better. better. Uh, star map. Yeah. But that's that's like your primary, like, like as soon as you open that thing up, you're like, what am I looking at? <laughs> Once we feel like we're really honed in on the gameplay, I'm hoping that they'll bring back the tutorial too, because mm -hmm. that's where we lose a lot of people. It's it's something it's like kind of a service we provide as content creators for this, is we essentially mm -hmm. are creating the tutorial experience, but oh, yeah. it doesn't we're not I mean, I'll able take to people come, out and I'll tell them how to do to mining. The whole audience, right? Like yeah. And that's what I've been doing, H C. Yeah. Is I go in there and I said, Who's been playing this game for less than a week? And there's a bunch of hands and there's been mm -hmm. a lot of salt. Pretty happy about that. We'll see what happens when the patch drops. I feel like, I feel like if you were coming in right something. now, there's okay. so much to the game still, right? It's the people who've been playing a lot who are more salty right now, just waiting for the next content patch. Yeah, I agree. Like the, the we talked about today on, on my stream is like the closer you are, to the trenches of Star Citizen of the up of the um, of the game itself, the development, the saltier you're going to be because Star Citizen is not to be meant meant to be played eight hours a day, six days a week, seven days a week. No. You're you're supposed to come in, try it out for, for a couple hours. Oh, that's kind of cool, and then you give it a rest for six months, six eight months, and you try it again. <laughs> um, so the people right. that are most enjoying Star Citizens are the ones who are not playing it right now. 
<laughs> would be my take from it. <laughs> Which is uh, CIG, de CIG developers have, st have said before, if you don't like Star Citizen right now, go play something else because it's not ready to be a game. It's, a, it's, it's designed to kind of show everybody, the rest of the world, that, hey, we are working on a product. We have, we have something to show you. It's a tech demo. It's designed to demonstrate and show off what they're doing, their technical capabilities and the direction of the project's going. It's designed to be impressive, kind of like a commercial. A little, a little slice of Star Citizen. You come in like, oh, I, it's kind of rough, but I see where they're going, the and it's impressive. Teaser trailer. Yeah, it's a teaser for for the final product, and it's designed to kind of get people into the project. Like, oh, okay, cool. They're updating every every quarter, every four months. Or, sorry, every three months there's an update. Oh, that's kind of cool. Oh, I should give them some money because I like where it's going. It's not meant to be played every day. If you if you're down there, you're playing Star Citizen every day, you're gonna be disappointed. Oops, that's just that's all yeah. there is to it. I think I think you can get more than six or eight hours in six months for sure. Like yeah, oh yeah, I'm just I'm just that's kind of like just like like an example of hyper pool. It's just like yeah. I, I will say I've got players in my org who definitely are that. They'll come in, and they'll be like, oh cool, this is less shitty than last time. I'll see you later. <laughs> yeah, right. And I'm like, okay, yeah. that's legit. Like they they're just you know the the people who aren't there to test the game. They're gonna play it mm -hmm. different, and that's totally okay. And there's certain right? things that are not debatable about this game. I mean, the beauty, the way they handle graphics, and every mm -hmm. little detail. Um, but that takes time. Detail orientation, especially with when it comes to the perspective of the ship, is is pretty extreme. I yeah, that's what drew me away from Elite Dangerous to this game. But just how they me, handle the ship. Me yeah. going in my hab and initially not even being able to figure out how to open my damn door almost made me rage quit the game <laughs> before <laughs> anything else. Because it was before there were even help bubbles. And I'm just like, you know what? Screw it. If I can't open this stupid door, like even when I did figure out how to click it, there was like bugs with the, the API. Oh, yeah. So it was just like look, door's not responding today. All right. And I'm like, that was enough. I'm like, dude, yeah. I, I play other games that work. Why are you guys trying to convince me to play this? But then I I had someone come in and be like, hold down F, click it, right? A veteran yeah. player who was trying to convince me to play it, walk me through the steps to kind of get through the basics. And after that, some clicked and I was like, dude, this is just amazing. All right. I'll still play Elite Dangerous because I can play it in VR natively. But yeah. I won't play Elite Dangerous outside of VR. And when I look at the ships inside Elite Dangerous, I just I just crave the level of detail that I see in these ships. Mm. Right? That's my thing. They feel like plastic. Because because I'm I'm used to the polish from this amazing art team that we have. But I'm also excessively forgiving of a lot of the other problems that we encounter. But mm -hmm. I also I'm I'm also I like playing things when they're pretty raw. And I think personally, myself, I enjoy doing things that I shouldn't do. So, you know, kind of like, you know, when you when you steal NPCs from a place and move them over or you find a crazy exploit and you test it out, right? Like mm -hmm. weird shit that would normally get you in trouble on a, a full properly released MMO it's fun to be able to participate in it during this really raw phase yeah. and know that you're like, you're testing and it's okay that you're dicking around with those kind of things. Um, whereas like, if I was trying to do that in wow or whatever, I'm just a hacker. Right. Hmm. Yeah. And uh, you're, you're an exploiter. You're, you're, yeah. you're, you're a piece of crap and you know, you should straighten up. We're going to call a GM on you or whatever they call them in world of Warcraft. And we're going to have them ban you for a couple of days and set you straight and that kind of stuff. Yeah, I remember I was crashing way. servers. I was crashing servers, picking up guns I shouldn't have picked, been able to pick up. And CIG was like, yeah, could you, could you please stop? <laughs> exactly. We, we know it's a log bug. Can you, can you just not? We're going like, to miss that stuff, though, because we can experiment so much. When this goes live, like what? We can't experiment and crater and try to squeeze into stuff when I'm supposed to. Well, I think we're still going to, we're still going to, do that but they they need to learn as a company how to deal with it and i was really glad to see chris in that video like the last week talk. week before yeah. like actually talking about doing something instead of resetting everyone identify the people who are exploiting things too extremely mm -hmm. and reset those accounts let's start and that's that's the, that's the kind of tools you're going to need as developers is to, to identifying the bad actors the outliers the people in your data that's how you find hackers sometimes some yeah. people are so bad 
at at controlling their 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 desire to exploit or hack or use cheats and whatnot that it shows up in a list of statistics like you'll see somebody you'll you'll people do this so this is uh, there was a good defcon talk where people were talking about selling cheats and hacks you should watch it's pretty interesting but they were talking about how some developers they'll just go to work fire up their uh, their computer and they'll just generate a spreadsheet from all the statistics from the from the night before and they'll just ban everybody that has outlier statistics. Yeah. They're like, this person made 10,000 gold in one hour. Banned. That's You can't do that. That's an exploit. This person has a 95% accuracy. Banned. Point, right? That's why I yeah. stopped playing um, EVE Online. Because the developers treated those outliers like it was everybody. And they yeah. just changed the game to prevent that gameplay. What I, mm -hmm. what I liked in Elite Dangerous was that they would... Like when you found like some kind of really good niche in in the market or whatever that was like, you know, an algorithm mess up or whatever. Sure, you made a billion, but they would quickly, quickly patch it and it became like it became like group events. It became group events where it created content where there just wasn't content. And all they really had to do was say, now, hey, look, in a year, you're going to need that $5 billion to be able to buy these carriers, right? They Never never did they reset any of my accounts because I went and found meta alloys and traded a billion in a night. It was just like I knew that that thing was only going to last a night, so I stayed up all night and had a bunch of Mountain Dews. Mm -hmm. And it was me and like five other dudes were all just like, I don't know why we're so like, they're going to patch it tomorrow. They're going to patch it. We know that's that's kind of how it. you should treat it because that, that generates an amazing amount of content. Kind of like how Jump Town was with Star Citizen. Yeah, like dude, that was the only place you could buy ass. Widow and Widow would sell everywhere for a stupid amount of money. And everybody was just like a magnet right there. And that's how we got some excellent memes and stories yeah. out of it, created content. And yeah. now it's just like CIG's like, yeah, we want to do that again. Well, you, what's to stop you from doing it again? Just stop nerfing all the prices. Give us, yeah. like, they could even, like, once a week round robin it to a different location, have a yeah. limited Yeah, or once a patch a every three, every, every three right. months, just have a different drug lab. Just have the thing. Well, I guess three to six months now. <laughs> yeah. yeah, every patch. Yeah. <laughs> so, but uh, the joke is that 4.0 is going to come out before 3.9 at this rate. So I'm, I'm glad to hear how Kai was. How are you, Gandora? <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing good. I mean, this is it was my bad. Your week been? It, was, it was a conversation starter. Okay. Uh, okay. Fun. So my week has been pretty awesome. Um, obviously, there's shitty things about the current situation that we're all in, but. Every time something shitty has happened, I've just driven the two and a half hours to go to my empty land and worked on my cabin. And it's made me feel better to put things together with my hands. So I uh, I, I also I melted a bunch of ships, little little snub noses and said, screw it. The car to wall is it hasn't done me any good in a really long time. I upgraded that to a mole and after after an incident that will come up later when you ask me for my story. And uh, then, <laughs> you know, I finally started playing a slightly more chill way to make money in the game. Uh, I'm still not very good at it. I blew up my <laughs> mole like four times on Tuesday. Uh, two of them were my crewmate who was convinced that she was going to be able to fly it better than me. And then she told me about her driver's uh, test and how she really shouldn't have passed it. And then it explained why sl we slammed into the planet twice in a row. Um, but that said, it was uh, it was emergent gameplay. <laughs> the yeah. part. Uh, no, I, I've had a good time. I've, I've been trying to figure out how we're going to you know balance the, the content I'm creating. I'm also, you know, I'm working on this cabin as a potential for me to move out there. Uh, permanently and so a big part of what I'm trying to figure out as as a full-time streamer is how do I get good enough internet and power to, to have a have this show run off the grid perhaps uh, briefly so uh, I was well you get a out. dynamo you put your building next to a lake next to a river and yeah. you put a water wheel in the in the lake <laughs> in the uh, the river 
Yeah, yeah, no, no. As in, like, but it's, it's a matter of getting theory. enough bandwidth, right? Because I'm like, now I could probably run a show. Now for bandwidth, on... we actually we actually tried to do this math a long time ago. If you were to give a carrier pigeon a hard drive, you would actually <laughs> oh you'd actually have more bandwidth, effective bandwidth than any any okay. sort of landline well, you could possibly have. Bandwidth to latency ratio. Yeah, there you go. Latency. Problem. That's the that's okay. the one you gotta watch so out for. That's where it's like satellite was what I was thinking. And I think that actually might work for streaming because <laughs> they're already used to seven second latency anyways. But I think I would have to have like LTE for my game connection unless I just wanted to be a fail streamer. Because adding another 250 milliseconds on top of the 100 something milliseconds I was already getting. You just have to have wow. a really big buffer. Yeah, yeah. And come Basically. to think of it, if you if your homing pigeon gets lost, it's no longer a homing pigeon. It's just a pigeon. So there you go. Well, it doesn't have to come back. I'm just no, saying it that doesn't. That gets out. I have faith that it, it doesn't have to come home. You I have just faith. Have to have a lot oh, of, don't you of do the it. heart. Don't you do it. I, I knew have, as soon as the word faith it. got heard. Oh my it's, god. It's okay. We can have faith of the heart. Do you not like that? Do you not like faith of the yeah, heart? Like faith of the heart. Oh, ask, uh, uh, Going where my heart's going to take you me. You told me the story. You, you have faith to believe. You told me the story about how he sung it back to you. So it was okay. No, 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 not sung it back, sing it back. I'm just constantly. Every time it comes up, I have to sing Faith of the Heart. Get, get, but yeah, no, I, I think that uh, things are okay, though. I, uh, I've i been enjoying, like, I, I was really, really feeling pretty salty about the lack of new stuff in Star Citizen, but I'm, I'm trying to push myself to experience it a little bit differently now. Uh, normally, I don't worry about making money. Uh, and I'm trying to say, hey, you know, you play this all the time. You probably shouldn't always have a zero balance. Uh, so, <laughs> so that that's that's my growing experience personally. How how about you, Vertigo? What you been up to, buddy? Well, just trying to avoid the old coronavirus. Coronavirus. Uh, I'm over here staying indoors, streaming a lot. Um, trying to not lose my mind playing star citizen today was particularly awful just nothing but issues i guess they're doing something on the back end i was trying to do something simple trying to show a dude stuff in star citizen and he was just falling through the ground and the air 3ks crashing out this that this other thing outposts weren't working for me bless, trade goods weren't refreshing properly heart. it's just a nightmare i've been telling you I've, a week before, even two weeks before they do these major releases, I think they start staking stuff on the server, and this happens. Oh, yeah. I'm sure they're monkeying with the back end. That's why it was so bad. So I just, I just, at like six hours in, I just gave up on Star Citizen. I went to play Stellaris for a little bit to show everybody why I'm so crazy about Stellaris. And everybody was like, I recognize this soundtrack, Vertigo. You play this thing on the channel all the time. I'm like, yep, I love the soundtrack oh, man. for Stellaris. It'd be fun to play um, with you sometime. I've, I've been really into Stellaris lately, too. Yeah, I need to set a if I mean I need to set a specific date for it though. I need to yeah. like okay, we're gonna do Stellaris on these days, and we're gonna do variety streaming on these days. Mm, so yeah, kind of like how Paul Shelley does it. He has like days where he's playing certain games and yeah. days for Star Citizen, days for other content. Yeah, totally uh, so I need to do something like that. It's not a bad idea. Great. It's another yeah, one of those absolutely. ones that has a steep, steep learning curve, though. Like I, I was I showing played... it off today. It took me about an. It took literally took me an hour before I even got to the to the main game. Gotcha. Just Before just I even unpause the game, like you, you, you just create your race your and stuff, right? Yeah, like, you make your race, you get into the start screen, and then I started explaining everything. Yeah. And it's just like an hour goes by. Okay, finally, everybody, we're ready to start the game. Unpause. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just like, okay, here we go. Those are the best dreams, though. Oh, man. Yeah. I, I have learned it completely in multiplayer. I've never done a single player. I do not recommend it. It multiplayer is, is a well like it's like master of ryan 2 i used to play master of ryan 2 over um our our 56k dial-up stuff and it's completely different beast from single player in single player you can get away with a lot of shenanigans because the ai is kind of kind of derpy a little bit but in multiplayer everybody's building a race to conquer you in a very specific overpowered way it's just you, you your race just can't have any weaknesses or effective weaknesses so yeah. Unless he, everybody agrees that, okay, we're going to role play this stuff. And, and if you get people to do that, say like, okay, we're not going to metagame. We're going to create a theme for our, our races and we're going to try to play those themes. Win or lose, we're going to have a good time. That's that's yeah, our goal. For my groups, we've always done PVE co-op 
and yeah. then we just we just go ham on the AI, and then if once once the players get good enough, we're like, all right, let's make the AI really strong. And then the only ways I've found with PvP enabled that are enjoyable is when you uh, when you like turn up the speeds on the civics and everything and set in game to be really really early. Mm -hmm. And then set the AI to be strong, so you're like, well, cool. We're probably all gonna die anyway, so you probably oh, oh, are oh. fight with uh, in the latest patch, the uh, latest patch for Stellaris, the uh, the 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 galactic nemesis or whatever they I can't remember what they call the galactic events, the um, what are they, the galactic threats. What do they call them again? They, it goes up to twenty five times strength now. Literally impossible. Goes up to twenty five. Oh, yeah. Like yeah. you, you well, can imagine like get people to work together, right? Like, you, you can you can imagine like having the contingency pop up, and all their fleets are like millions of fleet power now when they pop up. Dude, that's what would happen. That's pretty crazy. I don't know. I I was playing a game for like four months, and then we find like I think that we never hit end game. Mm-hmm. And it was just us all being like, did the end game already happen? Like, what happened? Like, we were just all like six of us who were all like confused at whether or not it was still going. And yeah. so we that's why that's why you have to have like score victory turned on. Like, otherwise, it just yeah. drags on forever. We were like, wait, did we beat the end game? Like, uh, <laughs> we ended up redoing it. It was a much better experience. Whose turn is it? To look for. I think we got through everybody. No, uh, we it was my turn. Buster, for God's sake. Buster, how's your how's your week? Tell us tell us how you're doing. It take like 50 minutes because we've taken at least. That. <laughs> yeah. um, I'm sorry, yeah. we've we've been mansplaining <laughs> to your stream this entire time. <laughs> not been Don't say that. Um, I've been, I've been manspreading, good. but in the privacy of my own home. Oh, well, so I, mean, I guess that's okay. You gotta keep it's those balls sister. cool, you know. <laughs> I, 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 I do have a fan pointing at my pant leg, so I guess you're right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad that Virgo's here for my last hosting gig uh, for the night crew. Uh, <laughs> hey, hey, Buster, if you like, I can get the microphone in the picture. I know how much you like it. Mm. Mm. Where's that sock? <laughs> Where is that sock? I can put a sock in. Oh my god! Yeah, everybody put a sock. It says Hanes on it. <laughs> no, um. Oh you should start with uh, your big news, Buster. So, what's my big news? Yeah. That oh. One of us morons is going to be hosting this soon. Yeah, well, we'll get to that in a second. So, my week, oh, so just getting into my week, though. Um, week has been pretty good. Saturday, we did our final episode of season one of Star Trek Vasquez, where I play Commander Baj. And, uh, that was a lot of fun. I'm really going to miss that show. Um, we won't do it again till about the same time of like same time frame uh, in 2021. So it's like, you know, it's okay. like a, we're doing like real TV show where you actually have to wait a whole, you know, nine to whatever months for the next season. So yeah, so that'll be back in the winter of 2021. Uh, we might do a couple little one-off episodes one here and there, but I am going to Actium um soon we're gonna go back on the expanse thing so that's coming back um gotcha. may, like at the beginning of may uh but i made cinnamon rolls this weekend um Ooh. they were really pretty i'm just gonna say um, i saw yeah i saw them on twitter yeah they were freaking delicious. delicious i just finished the last one today but mm. um but yeah i did that and then of course been playing star season this week was supposed to play pulsar on wednesday with paul and uh spazzy mcgee and um, Loken plays and stuff like that, and, but we uh, one of our one of our people had to cancel on us this week, and so we so Paul and I actually just played Star Citizen together last night. Had a lot of fun doing that. We uh, we 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 did drug runs. I had like I started out with two almost two hundred k or one hundred sixty nine k, and ended up with like six six k after at some point, and then and then Paul had to like loan me like seventy five k so I could get back up. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god yeah that's brutal when that stuff happens yeah well the first i can't remember what i think the first time it was like a, a a crash to desktop and then the second one it was um i had a bounty out and so somebody got me so uh, right when i was about to make yeah, it don't do drugs I mean, don't do drugs with bounties yeah i know but you know it made oh, it more shit. exciting whatever it was fun but okay. um well but yeah we did that can... and then I mean, other than that, the week's been going pretty good, just like everybody else. Uh, surviving Corona. My mom, my mom is sending me a pack of masks she handmade herself. One has Pokemon, 
so I'm excited for that one. It has nice. Bulbasaur. I like Bulbasaur. But uh, but yeah, it's just you know. And then I guess the big the big thing is is this is the last time I'm hosting Night Crew show. So let's so we'll just get this out of the way now. So um, I today I, I've been thinking I've I've had a lot of I've been putting a lot of thought into a lot of things, especially around my own content and and also this show in particular. And as much as I love like I really love doing this show, guys, and, and chat and everything. I really love y'all, and I don't want y'all to think I'm like abandoning anybody. It's just, I've been doing it for a year now. Like, when I first came into the night crew, I, you know, I just came in and whatever. And, it cut like, maybe a month or two in, KP asked for, like, hey, can somebody also be a manager with me? And I was like, sure, I guess I'll do it. And then it turned into, I also became the show host here. And so I've been doing this for a solid year. And I, I've enjoyed my time doing this. But at the same time, like I'm at that place where I feel like it's time for somebody else to take it over and try to do something with it. Because it's t it's taken me places and I've taken it places. But I think me and this show have taken each other as far as we can take each other. So it's time for some new people to try to do new things with it. So it's all up in the air. We will have new hosts. I think KP will probably cover next week just, just so we have somebody doing it. But um while we figure out, but we, we are going through a process now of, of figuring out who, who the next host is. But I think we're probably going to do more than one host. That way people can kind of rotate in and out, you know, and like it's a shared duty. So, but that, that's what it is. So this is my last, that's why tonight's episode is called One More Blood Wine. So <laughs> thank you. Thank you. You know, we'll, we'll probably talk more about this at the end, but thank you guys for being here and being awesome. And uh, to all Aww. the guests, to all the viewers. And thank you. Thank you very much. Cheers, everybody. Sure. So that's my Thanks week. For me. I'll save my gushing for the end. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We can gush I, mean, end. Like, I think I think it's just you're gonna be focusing on your content too. And yeah. I uh I know that uh that's gonna it's gonna end well for everyone, honestly. <sighs> I hot. I was worried you weren't gonna be on the show with us anymore. I'm like, oh okay, you just, you're not gonna be the one pushing the buttons. I'm okay yeah, with this. Take it off. I'm okay with this. Shut we up. can work together still. <laughs> oh my That's God. the kind of show it's gonna be. I'm sorry. Oh, it's so hot. It's oh, hot. I, 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 I live in Texas, guys. It's like one second it's fine, Texas. and the next minute it's like. I'm not lying. I've been there. I, I left. It's too hot. Whew, boy. <laughs> So um, I got family out there. I'll be like, I'll be like, mm, okay, I'll visit in the winter. <laughs> yeah, and even in the winter, it's like it's like it's spring. Like, it's still hot, but it's like yeah. it's okay. Like spring is just like like you know, it's like the first round of summer, right? <laughs> so, but um, that moves us family into in Texas. yeah, yeah, that moves us into um, some of our our little things we talk about, which every one of you's done this before, so I don't have to explain it. Bug of the week. This time I'll start with Vertigo. Vertigo, Mr. HC Vertigo, what is your bug of the week in Star Citizen? Whether it's entertaining, it's terrible, or it just was whatever. Well, I figured out how to reliably get down the elevators at outposts that don't respond to you, and it's hilarious for other people to watch. So <laughs> it requires you to dance, use the a dance emote to have your character walk backwards through a piece of geometry and you fall through the elevator shaft and maybe oh. you live maybe you don't it's a uh right. it's interesting so i thought it was dance, pretty funny the dance moves a little bit backwards so if you it's if you dance to oh, slash dance two, dance two okay. is the emote and your character does this thing but he steps backwards so kind of yeah. and okay. if he steps backwards and there's nothing underneath him it's like a looney tunes episode Sweetie. That might be a way to get out of the ship geometry when I'm on the wrong side of a wall, though. This is my spot, but I've always I been fascinated by this time. as someone who streams this professionally. How long does it take you to find that get around? Quest? To find that what? Like the passion of his job is finding find ways to break in and out of things that he doesn't belong in. <laughs> yeah. I mean, no one. You just I feel like you spent you spend hours you spend hours sometimes trying to get places you don't belong uh, if you want to get there. Chat, y'all let me know if my turned up. But um, there you go. So vertigo. It sounds like I noticed that with that dance the other day because I have a dance. Uh, I I bound dance to just the general dance emote, 
to a key mm -hmm. recently and if I, i've actually discovered if i hit it like you know over and over it actually sh it actually like um shuffle like again. it shuffles and rotates through the different dance moves and i noticed that one like where it goes backward but that, that's funny mm -hmm. it's like a looney tune <laughs> just drop <laughs> yeah i'll have to try that that'll be fun that'll be a good one but uh mr gandora what is your bug of the week so it wasn't a it wasn't a happy story okay um oh, no. so you know how i hate trade it's stupid uh <clears throat> But mostly because I always blow up. Well, I blew up with all my money uh, in my Caterpillar. I, I said, screw it. You know, they just said, they said persistence is going to be through. I got 330000 I don't know how I got that much. Wow. Because I just, I just piloted it. Fighters. And so, and then I was like, I don't normally go to Area 18 to do trade. But they were like, you should, you should go buy diamonds and sell them at Area 18. And I'm like, Okay. I'm feeling positive today. Oh, yes, the death roll. Uh, I know where this is going. Yeah, yeah. And so I go, I'm like, okay, I can see where the, uh, I can see where the uh, no-fly zone is. It's fine. You know, logically, I'm going to ease in so that I don't want to, I, I shouldn't have to point straight down in a giant loaded caterpillar full of diamonds, right? That mm -hmm. logically, I should go hover over it and then go down. But then... <laughs> And now I don't trade again. <laughs> so there you go. Gandora. Uh, I put in a couple bug somewhere. reports. There's uh there's a couple death immediate death areas. Yeah. Yeah, it was just it just exploded. I'm like I was in third person. We could see I was well above the no fly zone. It was just saying, Hey, the fly zone no fly zone's close. I didn't see anything in front of me. I was like right next to the right next to the pad. I was about to go in. Boom, just exploded. Like, I'm like, as like, Ravier came in right after that. And he's like, mm -hmm. whoa, why aren't you trading anymore? And I'm like, it's your fault. I looked up that route on your tool. <laughs> it was your fault. You're the reason I was brave enough to trade. He said I could make money. But then I was at zero. And it was just hilarious because I was all like, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, let's, let's make some money because it's not going to wipe. And I'm like... And everyone was making jokes that I was going to end up at zero while everyone else had money like the last time because I had that mm -hmm. bug where you all ended up at zero. And I was like, you know what? It's not even going to be their fault. I'm at zero. Whatever. Let's go fight. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, there you go. That was my bug. How, uh, how about uh, Kay? Yeah, Kai. Kai. Um, I have been sticking to mining and trading uh, and particularly caterpillar just landing in first person um so it's not so much a bug as a feature they need to work on i hate going into third person to have to land a big ship i love big ships mm -hmm. um and the fact that we have to do it to land until you do it over and over and over and over Maybe that's the way it should mm -hmm. be i don't know but there has to be some sort of an ILS or something that lets you come in and land with hopping in third person. Like Sometimes. an external, like external camera views or like a, uh, a, yeah. a virtual position view, kind of like what you have in Elite Dangerous for landing, yeah. right? Like you don't have to go into third person in Elite it, Dangerous. It's not so much a bug as future gameplay. It's not cheating. Gotcha. If you're landing a massive ship like this, which is worth this much, Start thinking they're, they're gonna have some kind of that, right? <laughs> they're not just gonna say you should be good at this and be able to look out the <laughs> shitty little fucking window they give you. No. <laughs> Has to be better than especially that. with like hover mode when hover mode was in, it's just like I couldn't land oh, some ships man, in first person. Hard. I had to go third person, flip the camera up top and just Cater just Caterpillar to make sure. is one of those ones that really takes a while to get used to, too, because you got so much in front of you and behind you, right? And so... Or you're not lined up center with the ship. The character is easy. All I got to do is put the glass right that in the center. The biggest thing. And yeah. I'm so proud of myself over the past, like... Mm -hmm. I won't say rage quit from streaming, but since, <laughs> like, the past four weeks, I can land that bad boy perfectly. I still um, I still mess up every so often, but the Carrick, as everybody complains about the Carrick, all you gotta do is get the Carrick centered and put the glass right against that hangar door. Right up against the wall, down. and you're fine, right? Yeah, like, yeah. 
But I, I even keep showing every time I go to land the character, I keep people showing people here is the marker at area 18. Like yeah. right dead center, there's like these two, there's like these three little bumps across the hangar doors. If you line up with this bump right in the center and then just put the glass damn near on that fucking bump and you just come straight down, you're good. So are you guys okay with that though? Or like I no, I, I, I want it's, I want like, exactly when you what get you're so good with I, caterpillar, I want... you sort of know where the off center is and you can I, yeah, that's I, I am point. not okay with that. Like no. there should be some sort of assistant Indicator. landing mode. It shouldn't yeah. be easy, but and there should be it's, some skill I mean, there's, involved. There's enough skill involved in moving such a heavy vehicle already, especially if they start bringing some more of those hover mode elements back in, like yeah. they've said they will, right? It's going to be a skill intensive thing, but we need to have good sensor display. Oh, and keep in mind, position. and keep in mind, degradation is going to be a thing. Not everything's going to work perfect all the time. Like some of your thrusters may have been a little wear and tear on them because you know you took some damage, got a little firepower. I so think maybe you got one side of the ship that's kind of listing a little see bit. That stupid little wrench icon through mm -hmm. your ship, but as soon as it's off the glass, you can't see it. Yeah, but yeah, pretty much. Otherwise, you have to do that. What Gandor you were talking about? That, like you have to do that straight down. From yeah, that's how you're going. That's a big problem, right? And then, and I think one of the reasons that hover mode fell so flat is they didn't have any of those assistive type things in there. And so it really just ended up highlighting on some of the flaws in their navigation HUD because of the fact that once you couldn't point down and look at where you were going, it became unnecessarily difficult to land. So I'm saying you had, is, people, you had people hovering like 100 meters up and be like, the way to land is you turn your engines off right here. When I come into a port <laughs> or anywhere, I want to see someone in chat saying, that guy knew how to land that ship. That's what I'm looking for. Yeah. No, I, I think that's definitely an area of improvement for yeah. sure. How about you, Buster? Um, my bug of the week is I found this little hole in the carrick that you can fall through and you can fall out of the ship. Yeah. Uh, Where is it? In I sent, the back actually, the I sent you that clip, Vertigo. Did you see that? But, um, yeah, Dar probably did. Dar probably don't remember. Darjanator and I discovered it, um, <laughs> because I was playing Friday, which is not typical of me. And thank you, uh, speaking of for that raid on that day, Vertigo. Um, mm -hmm. and what was it? Uh, we okay, so we were like flying around doing hit trading for him and his Carrick, and like there were like some people in my chat that seemed like they hadn't seen the Carrick before because they were asking like, "What is this ship?" So I was like, "Okay, let's do a tour," and so we were like, you know, mm -hmm. as we're like going between plot ports and stuff, I'm just like, "Okay, check this out, this and that," and Darge was with me too, so Darge was like, "Oh yeah, like look at this," and he opens that thing like it's like behind that ladder in engineering, like the on jump the, drive, up, yeah, yeah, where that thing opens, and. Mm -hmm. Like, there's a crawl space. All the way in the back of the... I, I just watched the clip to remind myself. All the way to the back of the engineering room yeah. on the rear of the ship where the jump drive is located. It has this little shelf underneath it that doesn't have anything there. And Buster crawled right into it. And... Yeah. Well, first, Darge crawled into it, and he fell out. And so I had to stop <laughs> the ship. Because, like, when he, when he you know, hit backspace, like, he ended up back at port instead of inside the ICU because it had already gone too far. And so... <laughs> He he flies to me, but the thing is, is I'm just kind of like, okay, I stopped the ship. I'm just chilling. I'm waiting for Darge, and I'm like, I'm gonna do it now because I'm just gonna fall right under the ship. But the thing is, is somehow I didn't stop the ship from moving. It was still going at like a rate of like 300 meters. Oh, per so second. it was just like it was gone. Actually. It was gone, <laughs> and even when I like, and there was even... no pilot. Yeah, no pilot. <laughs> well, I was the pilot left, and I went. wait. But but you had your you had yourself set to the med bed, so all you had to do is commit long backspace, right? Or did you forget? No, I I hit backspace after a little bit, but then like it it still didn't take me back to the ICU, which I should have been in range because the range is like I can't remember what the range is. It's but like, I should. I thought it was a million. Yeah, it's something like that. Like I should have been in range, but it didn't. It didn't put me back in there. So, basically, after gotcha. that, Darge and Darge and I, like Darge, ca caught back up with it in his ship. But he, that's like you know, it was moving forward because at first we just thought it had, like despawned. But then when he got there, he realized like, oh no, wait, it's like moving. And so he's like, Buster, I thought you turned it off. And I was like, I thought I turned it off too. 
so it was a whole thing. It was stupid. But Buster, was how do we figure out how much currency we have in this channel? What? How much? How do we figure out how much currency we have in this channel? Um, it's in the bottom. Uh, so you no, can, we know it's a channel point. See it next to your chat. Not channel points. Yeah, well, you have channel points. Oh, that that thing. Gotcha. I have no idea. I I <laughs> I have no clue. But that, by the, the way, that guys, raffle no idea how much that raffle have. won't happen till the end of the month. By the way, I did find that out today. So because we were talking, we were talking about that last week. Uh, the raffle will happen at the end of the month. So if you can figure out what the command is to figure out how much money you uh, have, uh, if some, so if y'all want to, if somebody want, other than me wants to message KP and ask him, that would be great. Guys, can I can I tell you sure. can I tell you a good bug I found that was fun? Yeah, go ahead. Go All for right. it. You see, you see that behind me. You see uh, me sitting on oh, top yeah. of. That was, you was see that me you? sitting on top. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. That's. I saw that, that somewhere uh, this week. Yeah, yeah. No, I was. Uh, I just. I. Uh, I tested this with one of my org mates, Baby Bell, and and I was able to walk to the spot and just sit on top of my warden, and she flew me all around. And then we even got into the atmosphere on Area 18, and I, like, walked off of the top of the ship into a freelancer that was kind of sideways, and we had, like, the gravity switch directions as I was falling, and I didn't even biff it. It was, like, it was pretty awesome. But, uh, yeah, apparently if you do the slash sit emote while you are standing on top of a ship, if gravity activates, you will stick to the ship's... Um, You'll stick to the ship's grid, but mm -hmm. the interesting thing in this case is I didn't show up inside the comm panel, so I could have stowed away this way without even showing up inside the comm. No one would have known I was there. Oh, so especially wow. on a larger ship, this could be a way to to infiltrate without being detected. Like picture doing this on a ship the size of the character or something no one's going to know you're there unless you show up in the comm window and that's even even then you're talking only someone who really really knows what they're doing is going to be aware so i thought it was an interesting one uh and uh obviously it was impressive that my ass was able to cling to the ship all the way through quantum um and there working, you go even working them glutes out <laughs> yeah working them glutes <laughs> for, for grippiness just got to clinch really hard. Yeah, Grippy just like, like maybe there was like like an antenna there. Just like, eh, hold it. <laughs> maybe there was like a bar there that you're just like squeezing yeah, on. Just like... <laughs> <laughs> the bar. All right, so. <laughs> mag cheeks. That's, That's the future. Yeah, back cheeks. Four one, mag yeah, cheeks. Yeah, everybody, don't skip leg day and don't skip butt day, okay? <laughs> I do exactly. butt day every day. I, I do squats, so. <laughs> but. <laughs> okay. Let's move into go. moment of the week. Vertigo, I don't think you've been around since we started this, um, but mm -hmm. just for the benefit of Vert Vertigo, I was about to call you Vertigo. <laughs> just for the, <laughs> the benefit of Vertigo, the benefit of Ver oh benefit God, of Vertigo, <laughs> Timmy V's <laughs> benefit of Vertigo, um, and the chat who haven't been here before. Um, moment of the week is where we like. It, it doesn't have to like it can be it has to be star citizen related but it doesn't it, it but it doesn't necessarily have like it can be like on your own channel as a streamer it can be on somebody el else's channel that you're watching it can just it can be like maybe like a piece of star citizen there was like a funny thing that happened on like star citizen live or whatever it is it, it just in some way star citizen related mm -hmm. doesn't matter where it came from but but moment of the week so favorite moment of the week i'll start with kai this time Hi. Hmm. Moment of the so, week. So, my moment of the week was with Star Citizen Live. Okay. I like the whole noir thing. Hmm. It was interesting. But oh, yeah. They, I was were, that they were black and white. Yeah. A couple of viewers, they mentioned that they had heard some rumor that there was going to be a attack from Pyro of an anti alien sect. And for some reason, that really made me laugh. Xeno threats. Stupid. The Xeno threat group. Yeah. yeah. And I don't know why, um, but with COVID and everything else, mm -hmm. that just made me smile and think that we're all dumb. 
<laughs> well done. Well done. Really good job simulating it in the lore. <laughs> and what about you, Gandora? What was your Star Citizen moment of the week? I think, uh, so I, I did enjoy catching up on some of the stuff, but I, for me, with the stress that I've had with trying to make money in trade and you know just not being able to really enjoy making money in the game melting melting some of my snubs and and turning that car to wall into a mole and then going out on my first trip and not even being picky and making 26k like on doing a really bad job mining mm -hmm. just made me feel good because i was like okay i will be able to buy more than just med pins and ammo for once i'm like i'm a full-time streamer who mostly streams star citizen but i'm always poor because i refuse to do the things that make me money so i'm like i have something that doesn't stress me out making money in the verse and that was a good feeling and uh and there you go just because I've, I've clearly demonstrated that every time you put a cargo load in my ship i will find the nearest asteroid or planet and plant myself directly into it um whether or not i have the best of intentions so i generally will just need to have <laughs> another pilot there to take the the heavy load that way i don't have to beat myself up about it when we inevitably blow up anyways <laughs> but yeah no that's uh that was a good moment for me i just i i it was nice to have an activity that's actually working especially since we don't have a lot of content coming in yeah and I still i still need to do my regular show and since i haven't done a ton of mining since mining first came out and i had a prospector it's actually really enjoyable and kind of new to me i don't know all the places to make lucrative money i am i i still haven't upgraded any of the parts on the ship there's a lot of gameplay that i can actually put into that ship to have an enjoyable time and it's a multi-cruise ship that people enjoy riding in so I, I'm pretty happy with that. It's 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 nice to have something to do that's fresh for me. I know everyone's been in the mole for a really long time, but like it's the first time I'm in my mole, so that's nice for me. Well, right on. Yep. What about you, AC? Moment of the week. Um, I don't think I I, I well, there's plenty of stuff I can talk about Star Citizen, but we'll talk about something that happened to me personally. That's fine. I don't have many dreams, or I don't remember waking up with any. I don't remember dreams after I wake up. But I swear to God, I woke up last Saturday dreaming that I was a main character in, in the Night of the Living Dead. Did you tweet the about this? The black and white one. Did you tweet yes, about Yes, I did. This? Yeah, okay. It was last, it was last Saturday. <laughs> and I'm just like, oh my God. I do remember seeing those tweets and being like, what? What is your Like, I don't have right the now? coronavirus, but it has my subconscious. That's, that's all I, that's, Aww. you know. Aw, there we go. I can't say your name. This is Vertigo. Okay, it's Vertigo. There you go. So that's I my moment of the week. Are, are, are we allowed to talk about something that isn't SE related? Yeah, you this can. is my real moment of the it's week. It's my okay? last my show. Real... I don't give a shit. Go ahead, do it. This Let's is my it. real moment Let's of the week, it. right behind me. Okay, I got the roof up on my cabin. Job. I'm so stoked. It's like oh, it's I needed to do something with my hands. So it's on my it's on my Twitter. If you want to see a little bit bigger here but like the roof is up on this cabin that i have been trying to build by hand i did that that alone i had my six-year-old and my 10-year-old running around at the bottom of that ladder fighting with each other over like ramen or something and i got all of those posts up and it was terrifying but i did it <laughs> and it's just like i don't know you, you know that feeling like when you when you like make progress on a project like you see something come together in front of you and it's just like it's just so good feeling right? that's the way like, i'm like when i'm drawing something because like i'm one of those yeah, people like i don't draw all the time i'm not one of those people that's always like you know there's all kinds of artists out there that are like i draw all the time because that's what you have to do and that's what you should do if you're a serious artist but like for me it's like once in a while i want to draw something and i get that wild hair and i'm like I, and i'm one of those people i have to complete it but like i have to complete it in the same session that i started it Gotcha. and so i'm the same way like because i'll be like okay 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 and then by the end it's like oh, look at that. 
Oh, like, yeah, I, I get what you're saying. Yeah. I'm like, oh, yes. And then, like, I, I can't stop staring at it for the next, like, two hours. Yeah. Like, I just sit there for two yeah. hours just looking at it. <laughs> for me, the two and a hour, the two and a half hour drive back home, the whole time, I'm just like, wow. And my kids are like, what, dad? I'm like, wasn't that awesome? And they're like, yeah, it was pretty okay. <laughs> <laughs> pretty okay. <laughs> like, it was all right, dad. It was all right. <laughs> I'm like, oh, of course, their experience was like, fun running in the woods they were petting slugs and stuff uh, but then but then like if Pets i if slugs. i know yeah literally and then asking why their hands were sticky after i'm like come on guys <laughs> <laughs> slugs are sticky but i mean like we all learned it around that age um yeah Plus, and when coats. i get when i get home it's like i want to go right back out there because i'm like okay i want to put the loft up now right like i just like i just want to do it until I run out of pieces to put on it. It's like a really big Lego set that that makes you extremely sore. <laughs> well, right on. Well, that's awesome. I'm glad that uh, I'm, I'm glad yeah. that you're finding like you have something to do that's that's not only like constructive, but it's yeah, like, it helps balance it out. Yeah, it's right? kind of like, getting you motivated to like you know keeping you motivated um, and all that. So yeah. um, that takes us just kind of into the general news of the week and things like that of Star Citizen. Um, so this is kind of where, you know, viewers, this is where the show is probably just going to kind of go where it goes in the discussions. Mm -hmm. So, um, oh, and thank you for the follow, Cade. And thank you earlier for the bits from Comic Stud. I didn't actually get to vo ver verbally, vocally say that. Um, but thank you, Comic Stud, again, for those bits. And, and of course, Rivera gave us bits as well. But, um, but yeah, uh, so we obviously were in a, like, a bit of a content drought. Um, you know, I, I think this is the last week that ISC should be off the air. Um, but they still do their live stuff. So last week we did get a pillar talk, which we talked about some last week. But if y'all want to discuss that this week, that's fine with me. And then we also, I mean, Friday was Star Citizen Live. And they had the lore, like, a, like three members of the lore team. And they, that what was it called? It was like the story of Star Citizen, and they they talked about story various. Of the universe. Yeah, yeah, they talked about various things, and um, just kind of glazed over a lot of lore topics. They took some really great questions from the community. I thought because I did watch it live. Um, they did, but I thought they I would some, say yeah. for someone who isn't, yeah, go ahead, Kyle. fascinated with lore and just getting into the game, it's almost mandatory viewing. It was a great episode. Interesting. Yeah, did, I, uh, yeah. Who all watched it, and what did you think? Yeah, I, I watched it. I I found some of it pretty interesting. I liked I liked learning more about the companies themselves. Mm -hmm. I uh, I tend to personally, as a developer and someone who's pretty deep in the weeds in the game mechanics themselves, be a little bit more interested in that. But I, one of the things that really has helped this this game come to life is how much they've put into the lore and like just the differences between the, the companies themselves. I, I've always appreciated how much effort they put into role playing it when they do the citizen cons and and mm -hmm. demonstrating these very different personalities when they create the commercials and stuff, even to the point of like other companies making fun of the ship manufacturers for whatever quirks they have, right? Like the the, the 890 jump gets made fun of in the commercial for the 890 jump by the guy who's like, yeah, if you really want to pay that much for it. Right. And, and I think that that willingness to create this, this, uh, this realism, even if it's poking fun at your own creations is something that, that I've always appreciated. Um, I, I found some of what they were going to over to be a little bit hard to follow, but, uh, but I think it was they were getting pretty deep in the weeds on some of the individual manufacturers. What uh, what about you, uh, Vertigo? What did you think about that? Uh, it was the pillar talk we're talking about, right? No, no, no. It was the one that oh, followed. It was the, the I one. I watched the uh, I watched the new fire summation of it. Mm. Okay. I totally just missed out. I just like the lore stuff really doesn't interest me at, the, at this point. So I just. I, I sat down and watched it. I didn't even watch it live. I was just like, oh, they're doing lore stuff? Yeah, let's just keep playing. <laughs> that was kind of like my reaction to it. I've had bad experience in the past when lore stuff comes up. Yeah. So I usually I, skip it now. It's, it's kind really. of interesting to see what their personal interpretations are on like the 
the image they're trying to project with those different organizations, though. I, I thought it was interesting, their thoughts on, uh, you know, a company that, that cares too much about people not being equipped to uh, to handle their area of, of space. It was it was an interesting look into their perception of uh, of an organization's ability to take care of business while taking care of its employees. Um, <laughs> I'll just say some of some of the opinions I were like, I, I hope this isn't accurate and it's a little bit unsettling. You feel that that you can't really be nice to people without a uh, without making too much sacrifice to be an effective company. Um, but but it was it was interesting seeing into that in particular. Um, one of the things that's really been apparent with the last couple shows is that they are struggling with this transition to working from home. Hmm. And and like I'm really, really seeing it. I'm hoping that they are they're coming through, but I can tell that a lot of these people just aren't used to working from home. They didn't have, you know, for anyone who works from home, you know that you need to have a separate space. You need to have like your zone where this is work time. Otherwise, it's really hard to manage. And if you have family, if you have pets, all that kind of stuff, uh, most of us as streamers, we've already kind of like encountered this. We had to figure out like, I put myself in work mode, right? Like I turn off certain things in browsers. I make sure certain things are not on my desk that might distract me. I'm performing, I'm working right now, right? Mm -hmm. And then you have your not work mode. And, and that's a really hard thing for people to learn initially. And, uh, and I, I hope that they're providing enough support to their staff to actually get through it because that transition is difficult. And I think that's, that's a big part of re the reason that we're seeing a significant lag in what we normally have come to expect because these teams, like I, I actually had been approached to work for um, CIG, but because of the fact that I exclusively work from home, I was not a good fit for their culture. And so this is a big culture shift for them. So I, I hope that they're able to, to manage it and, uh, and get through it and continue to produce what we've gotten used to them producing. Cause, cause they had been significantly improving. I want to say somebody, and maybe it was you Gandora, but somebody on the, the show recently, or maybe a show that I watched was talking about how it's an interesting transition. Cause it's, it's not just about like, you know, okay, they're all at home now, but it's like, they don't have that accessibility to each other. Like their coworkers anymore. Like, you can't just walk up to Steve's desk and be like, hey, Steve, um, I just did this thing. Can you come, like, take a quick look at it? Or can you, like, go through it with me real fast? Oh, yeah. And, like, you take the five, you know, Steve takes the five minutes to go to, you know, Beth's desk and check it out. And then, like, okay, cool. Like, it's it's like they actually have to, like, you know, it's a little more like, hey, I got to send this to you, like, and get your attention and get you to look at it. A lot you know? more work that goes into the communication. And yeah. And if, and if they don't have like regular office hours, like if, if you have something like discord and you have a, an open room and then basically someone just sits in that room, making themselves available, that kind of style works really well. If they're not using tools that allow you to kind of like show that you're available to answer questions like that, then it becomes more asynchronous and, and people who relied on quickly getting the expertise of one individual. Uh, not taking a ton of their time, but like, you know, walk up to the desk, you know, share a snack, mm -hmm. the, the cooler talk, all that kind of stuff like goes away. And as someone who's run software development teams for, you know, five plus years completely remotely, there's a lot of cultural things that have to happen to to make that still happen. But you still don't ever quite get to that same type of communications. You, you have to be, you choose different people to operate in a purely remote environment, in my experience. And, and that's difficult. So if you can't make that transition to saying, hey, I know they're not right there, but I need to be the squeaky wheel and get this answered right now. I need to mm -hmm. learn how Tom communicates online. I need to express that I'm not getting what I need out of this working relationship quickly, as opposed to what normally happens and we'll end up with huge delays is 
it becomes a more uncomfortable experience. It feels confrontational. And so you just try and figure it out. And so you spend a week trying to figure out something that would have taken five minutes for Tom to answer because you don't want to inconvenience him because you don't know whether or not he's busy. But if you see him over in his cubicle and you see he's watching a Facebook video or whatever because he's taking a load off between tasks, you know it's okay to approach him. Or maybe he's got like a sign that says I'm open or right. It's, yeah. it's a completely different way to communicate it. I know. What have your guys' experience has been uh, working from home? Have you have you ever worked from home for like a regular employment type activity? Any of you guys? I worked from home for about eighteen years. There you go. So My you probably friend, know a lot of what I'm talking about there. Because, well, the kids are like I I miss I never had that whole. Oh, daddy, you're home. It's like, oh, you're still here. And the wife, and no, it's the mean. wife was like, can you do this? Can you do that? It's like, fuck no. I fucking I'm working. I'm working. I'm working. <laughs> you're like, but you're here. I, it's really hard. One of my favorite stories is I used to work for IBM and they were a horrible, soul sucking corporation. Never work for IBM. Mm. That said, um, here, here, look, what look. I, Got a new no disclaimers. Okay. Oh, um, <laughs> the wrong when I found my new company, uh, I one of the requirements was that I had to commute, and I started doing it. And for the first two weeks, actually the very first day, I came home. My wife was on the porch, and she doesn't drink that much, very rarely actually. Mm -hmm. And she was on the porch with a bottle of wine, it's half empty, um, and she had locked herself out of the house <laughs> but like, she, had, she got locked out with the boy easy, wine too so yeah <laughs> it takes a certain discipline um from a number of perspectives um it, it's not easy uh, so for me it was sort of a natural adaptation um but it is wearing a lot of people well i've 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 kind of worked from home myself a couple times through a couple jobs like i i used to have a, a long time like this is my last my last full-time job I, I i was like the front desk girl as well as the call steward like my main job was the call steward for the stage hands but i was also front desk receptionist and i was also um head of the rental department apparently um mm -hmm. i was also the go-getter of lunch i mean i i did everything for very little pay and um but one of the things was is like one of my caveats was being the call steward, I had to have a, a phone, a work phone, and it had to be on 24 seven. And, you know, if, if somebody called me in the middle of the night, I had to answer on that phone. And so that used to really like put a downer in my nights. Cause it's like, I get home, you know, okay. And then it's like this big show's going on at the same time I'm home. And like all these stage chains are calling me and like, Hey, Buster, um, like, where's the venue? There's an address on the, well, I mean, uh, like, uh, yeah, it just, it just be that. But with him, and then of course, since then I've just done stuff from home and occasionally like show gigs, like most of my gigs, mm -hmm. I, I work on ahead of time. Like it's like a, a, however many weeks of planning and most of that I can do from home. Cause it's calling vendors and be like, Hey, I need like, you know, I need 64 round six foot tablecloths. Um, on this date for this month, you know, that kind of thing. So like a lot of working with vendors and things like that. But so I haven't had it as much, but he, my boyfriend, he, um, he, he's worked from home from several years now. And the, the one thing about it for me on the other side of it. So uh, is like, I, I miss, um, cause he, he used to go in two days a week, but now with this going on, he doesn't even go in for his two days. So now he's home all the time and that's fine. But I do miss, I just, I just miss him leaving the house once in a while. I, I thought he didn't leave the house enough uh, when he was leaving the house twice a week. <laughs> like, I thought he needed to get out more and go see his friends and stuff like that. Because I do that. But yeah, so one, it's just, it's, one it's, thing, it's just hard to deal with sometimes. One thing I did, because I, I was working from home for years, I created this, this separate space. This is where I stream. This is actually a separate building outside of the house moving out here kind of creates that idea of like when i walk out the door i'm working it's right? like a and i can still i can still have that experience if i walk inside the house and i'm like i'm fucking off right now right but one one of the things you were just describing 
uh, with them calling you at all hours and stuff, I think that's something a lot of people experience when they transition, like especially if they're salary already. So mm-hmm. people with on salary usually don't have their time respected. Yeah, but that's then exactly what yeah. happened when I was salary. Go from that to now you work from home, so they're like, whatever, you don't have a commute, you're in quarantine, so you should just be working. So like, there's a possibility that you have, you have managers who aren't aware of how to cope with this. Yeah. Yeah. And that they're pushing too hard and they're getting, you know, then people are resisting. So not only you have the issue of uh, people not being willing to approach other people because they're not used to the new form of communication, yeah. you have the opposite where people are probably just, just hammering someone who really needs to be able to focus because they're like, well, whatever. It's not like you're doing anything else. They're like, well, I actually was trying to do my goddamn job. <laughs> right? Like that's, that's, and you, you end up with those flipping back and forth. So one of the things I found was still setting office hours when you work from home saying, I work between this time and this time on these days. Right. Mm-hmm. And, and then setting a space where that's your workspace you just work there you don't Mm -hmm. do anything else there you just work there and then it becomes work you go you sit in that chair even if it's like you have the same computer but you have a different chair you sat in like whatever routine works for you but i found that like people having some kind of routine that differentiates it uh actually makes the experience feel more like work like and it will help you kind of get some semblance of that routine that you're used to because that that initial transition is painful i'll say this for all of this i miss going out and seeing people (laughs) it's great that there are guys that i went to college with that wouldn't give me time of day or we should have caught up and we didn't and now we do weekly but i still miss people yeah I've heard a lot of that. I've heard a lot of people saying that. Even, even I. I also love that there's the Earth is like healing itself because there's less pollution. Yeah, because we're not. That I've seen at least two up. CIG employees, whether in my chat or in their own stream, the, the, like in this week alone, just saying I miss people. Hmm. So yeah, I know they're feeling it, and really the whole world's feeling it. That that like you know people people that are fortunate enough to be able to have a job that transitions to to you can work from home because there's a lot of people out there that they don't have that luxury and the worst dichotomy there. ever is like gas is a dollar eighty nine, but I haven't mm-hmm. had to fill up my gas tank in like eight weeks. I know. Yeah. <laughs> like you know when you don't need the gas, it's real cheap, all right, and then when you need it, it's freaking expensive. We'll see how that goes. We won't get an economics in the United States right now. Oh my god, I've had to talk enough about that this week with with, with other people offline. But but yeah, it, it it is it is what it is. You know, CIG's adjusting to it just like most of the the you know the office space type of world right now. And uh, I you know I think as it goes on, they'll they'll do um, you know you know they'll. They'll, they'll they'll make it work they'll make it work just like the rest i of am us. excited that oh you know what one man's benefits into the misery i have four kids so three who are going to be getting their license in like eight months so i'm kind of excited that there's gonna be just a stupid surplus of used cars out there so i'm gonna to totally take advantage of that and get some oh yeah cheap cars. hey kitty i see a kitty on your screen Oh yeah. Meow. Oh, it's Millie. Meow. Sorry. Cats cats always derail the stream. <laughs> Meow. But um let's let's kinda get into some more stuff here. So let's yeah. uh, you know, I'm I'm tired of talking about because you know, I do the show every week, so I have to constantly like the last three, four weeks I've been having to talk con- constantly talk about oh what are people looking forward into three nine? Oh, what's gonna come in three nine? Let's talk about three point eight point two. How about that? Sure. What, what are we gonna uh, miss? What are we not gonna miss, gentlemen? Freedom uh, to kill anybody anywhere, anytime, without any repercussions. Gonna miss. That's gonna. Fair. Gonna. I, I'm not. I'm not system. I am gonna miss the There's no interdiction patch. I, 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 I'll miss some parts of that. I think. 
especially if they're looking at physicalizing our armor and having that get dropped. Um, I know that's a possibility. I will, whenever that, whenever that goes away, I'm very much going to miss that. Um, but, but that'll hopefully have a counterbalance that whenever I kill an NPC or a person, I can go take their armor. My hope is, um, but, uh, the, the, the true physicalization of inventory is, it looks like, starting to come into play here, but probably more in the 4.0 period mm -hmm. is when it's, like, fully, fully going to, like, because that's when iCash is coming out, right? So I think at that point, I'm going to miss some of the convenient kind of hokey things we can do, like taking off our backpack and, and long backspacing when we get stuck in a mine and knowing that we're still going to have our loot, you know, uh, things like that that won't work anymore once you don't have access to all your inventory all the time. Um, I, uh, I, I know Quanta is not part of this one, so trade's still going to be fairly static, so it'll still be easy for us to find trade routes and stuff. Um, did, did they put Quanta back on the board? Does anyone know? I didn't Not see this, it. But I haven't seen Quanta, no. I still argue a okay. point. I mean, I don't know. I hate that Quanta isn't there. That's the biggest thing that's missing. I think it's I think it's a really important thing that that should be part of it here. Well, I um can't think of what else like, you know, what are the differences gonna be as far as like what I'm gonna miss. What are you I'm gonna miss anything? Anybody else got anything? Citizen Con. Ooh, that's a good topic to talk about. Do we think Citizen yeah. Con's getting canceled? Mm hmm I mean, they, they keep advertising it still. Well, so they, they want to sell the tickets. LA mayor is like, this isn't happening. Yeah, so, and the, yeah. what is it? The LA... The LA uh, Convention Center is closing down. Yeah, it's closed yeah. down, and it's become like a like a mass, like kind of field hospital type thing. Yeah. 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 No, it's, I mean, like, I don't know that it's going to be converted in time for what September was when they were planning October. it. October. But yeah, but they would October. need prep time before, you know, that they'll yeah. have, because, you know, speaking from an event planner's perspective, you know, you have to, before you do something like that, there has to be like pre planning. And I was talking about the, this was, I think, uh, Paul last night while we were playing together is, you know, you gotta, you gotta have somebody that goes in, like kind of walks the space, gets to know the space and figures out the game plan, like the floor plan for everything, well, like maybe, what room everything's going put, in. Maybe they can put some of that energy into the actual like anniversary experience. Like I felt like this last year's anniversary fell flat compared to the previous one. In, so in, in what ways? Like I, I have some opinions I, about I, that one. Their cho so their choice their choice to not show ships that were in development, even mm -hmm. though they had shown them in the previous one, I think that was a poor choice. Well, that was mixed with their quality of life, right? And I think no, from but, their developer but, perspective, that is very, very important. And they knew no, 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 that... no, no, no. They already have them. It's a matter of like you have an Idris, it's ready to show on the outside. You got the wow factor. You already have the model. Just let us see it. And it's a really fun in-game experience, right? Yeah, it's, I don't really agree. But it's okay for us to disagree. Um, yeah, my thought, absolutely. my thought is that having some wow factor and oomph, like, actually surprise us during the anniversary sale. You have a, a whole year build up to it. Give us something interesting. And this year right. it's got to be at Microtech, right? So you're talking about the sale or the review during the in-game event? The in-game event. about the IAE, the Intergalactic Aerospace okay, Expo. Yeah. So Aerospace I Expo. The, the, the anniversary sale that happens. Yeah. Yeah. It's always right around the time they have CitizenCon anyways. Last some of that year's IAE was into... very disappointing. No question. Yeah. I want to I wanna have a more enjoyable in-game experience. Having in-game events is huge. I think it's really a great direction for us to be going. We should be having more in-game events like that. And uh, I'd be okay with them focusing the energy and money that they do for the Citizen Con to do a virtual Citizen Con. I think it would be a really great way to to actually push that experience so that we can you know be interacting be cool together. Is if 
CAG had people who like played like role acted walking you through the ship not like NPCs but had yeah. these times where small groups you could sign up and you could walk through if you're like that'd, that'd be amazing that would or be have someone awesome. giving like live talks inside the game the same way they do it at CitizenCon yeah. yeah. right that like, would be an know, amazing the experience sitting on the podium and saying, it, oh, and it would be an investment in pushing the technology of the game as opposed to this physical event was since we can't do it i understand the the physical event and that proximity proximity that ability for you know i was really hoping to go see buster in person this year right they haven't like, seen what they put into these things and buster's been there they need to just call this now and start spending their resources making it an amazing virtual thing. I would I would agree. Just just call it off now. Just to say, you know yeah. what? No one's gonna have any money. People can't be able to travel. We're probably not gonna have the convention okay. space. Just, I just right now. Just bucks yeah. Plus another three hundred. So it's fifteen hundred bucks. Plus whatever I'm gonna spend when I'm in LA. I'm totally going to get that back because it's gonna be canceled. I'll totally buy ships. Yeah, and, and they can still do they can still do a citizen con event. They can still have the swag packages that like yeah. I'll definitely buy a swag and package. Yeah, and and like, and then they can focus that effort on saying let's just have a really badass badass IAE and and in game experience citizen con, and like, focus our efforts on the game itself mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. an experience in that game. And I think that will have a lot more of a positive impact in the long run anyways right and i think but like you know and here here's kind of where i'll be devil's advocate a little bit too is like you know like obviously you know they're probably gonna have to cancel citizen con or or at least at the very least they they may not be able to do it in a convention center and they may have to move it at the at the yeah. you know at the it's most. not moving it's either but, it's gonna happen or yeah it's not. And, and that's the thing is um one of the things I think, and the most, the, the, whenever I hear, because I've never been to a Citizen Con, but the one thing that I hear people say the most about Citizen Con is, yeah, sure, like the con itself is cool, but I go there to see people. I go there. That's to, like, exactly what you go. I go, I go there to see, you know, like, and I, that's, that's my whole people, reason. yeah. Like, cause the I first was, time like, I went, I went for three days. Last year, I went for five, and this year, I was like eight days. Yeah, me too. I was going to do like a whole week or more in LA yeah. and I got like the coolest freaking place too. I'm so sad. Oh, too. My place has murals in it. Like I'm so excited. <laughs> and now I'm like, I was getting rooms from some guy from France. He's like, Hey, do you mind? It's like, I was, I was really excited. I was going to, I was going to actually go this year. Like I tend to stay at home and be like, cool. I'll, I'll experience it virtually with you guys. I'll, you know, but but it, it's not about going there and seeing an ice sculpture of the Carrick, right? Or in this right. case, probably it's about, it's about seeing it's each about, other. It's about seeing you guys in person, yeah. having a beer with you guys, Absolutely. and and meeting the developers and saying thank you so much for for yeah. creating this beautiful piece of art that has consumed so much of my wallet and my life, um, <laughs> and right like that. That's what it's about for me, and that's why I was really excited. Like I, I at the beginning of this year, I started trying to fund for it, and I'm glad that I didn't buy the tickets right off the bat because I have no idea what would happen. And I'm always just, just like I put all of my money into my freaking Carrick, I probably would have bought non-refundable tickets. So just, <laughs> it's not off. To be clear, I mean. I was a volunteer last year, and we have a ongoing chat, and we're all assuming it's it's going to keep going, but uh, and we're super excited about, it. and we're all talk about how it's the the con is cool itself. It, it's really about the dinners and the bar, and catching yeah, the food and yeah, it's about our experience with each other. Just like right now, this this show is about our experience together. Yeah, we all play Star Citizen, we stream Star Citizen, and, and we love Star Citizen, and sometimes we hate Star Citizen, it just depends upon the day, but it's it's about us coming together with the community here and experiencing life together, right? It, as together as we can be right now, especially. <laughs> yeah. At least that's if what it is for me. Do it, it would be neat if they picked a lot of streamers who have done a lot for the community 
um, you know, HC or, you know, Buster, there's bigger people, obviously, but, you know, you see these VIP suites throughout the game, you know, it would be cool if they gave you guys these private things where people go in and, you know, you can sell ships or tell people about the game or whatever it is. That'd be fun. They need to start thinking about this. I like your I like your idea of basically having someone roll act and and communicate, but like yeah. I think I think basically having rooms where you can have a developer or a content creator actually go in and and give a talk in an in-game environment would be amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, but I also think that it's it's really it's not going to scale properly until we get meshing either, because right the the big thing is. The reason they do it the way they do it right now is that they want to reach an audience of thousands. And so, granted, you could stream that experience there, but like if we could actually have an audience of thousands of players in an environment with a loudspeaker having someone give an actual talk about technology in the game, but then but to do that you would have to be able to project in external video sources into the game too it's a it's a complete piece of technology that isn't in the game as far as i understand it at all but look at the money and the time that goes into creating this con no i think you totally could totally reinvest that into could. that right I well think you you, you, you could yeah. just have the talk without any sort of presentation in the game and just do an overlay like over Twitch, and then anybody who's there, they just get the talk. Yeah. They don't get the over. They don't get any of the uh, media that they have going with it. Could but be happening. Put I think putting the media assets in there ahead of time. They always put assets in ahead of time, anyways. So so it might be doable, right? Like it's oh, they they, they figured out stuff, right? Like, they like, they'd, uh, they they data mine that stuff like months ahead of time. You'd have to. Oof. Yeah, but that's why they've been doing a day day or two before. But also, I think that, like, you know, freaking out about the fact that a couple of video clips of some new technology got leaked, it's still not the same experience that people are coming there for, right? Like, you're forgetting why people are there, and it's for that that personal interaction, too. You know, a lot of us, we, we want those leaks, right? You and I want those leaks. We need to know the latest and the greatest. And and we'll be all over that, but um, I don't think it ruins everyone's experience to to have those things exposed. Just like you know, me flying the Idris around in a modded version of the game does not ruin anyone's experience of the Idris when they get to actually fly it. I know. You know? Yeah, exactly. Right, like it's it's a totally different experience to I'm, actually I'm go do it yourself. I'm still concerned about this year, anyways, because I think it's going to be really Squadron 42 focused. Yeah. Which is fine. But I think this year might be a good year to do it virtually. And next year, blow it out. You know, just blow it all out. Yeah, it's, it is what it is. I'll be interested to see how much we really get from Squadron 42, because theoretically we already were supposed to have a beta of it. Um, so it's good. It's yeah. good that they've got the the crap out of the way now with the whole lawsuit situation, right? That's that's nice to see resolution there. I'm glad they fi- finally like came to an actual agreement. Uh, so. But now, now the question is, I understood why they were dragging their feet before, because it probably behooved them to sort out all the legal stuff <laughs> before they when you think of that, That's true, but think about the cool things that are coming in that. I mean, they had to totally retool the Squadron 42 roadmap because it's, they can't talk about what they've done without... Giving well, they haven't had they haven't retooled it yet. They just stop updating it. Like yeah, uh, when they initially they did it. Because if they ind- updated it, you'd almost play it through just reading it. Yeah. Kind of. And I love I... from a developer, like a programmer, techie guy perspective. Um, I love that it's the same engine. 
there's no difference really between Squadron 42 and Star Citizen. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, I know. I I like a lot of elements there. I, I would like to see, like, even if it was kind of like the Final Fantasy VII thing where, like, we all got to play the first, you know, 30 minutes, right? Like, if they've got that much done, even if we end up replaying that intro a bunch of times, it would just be nice as backers, I think, to like be able to experience a little bit of what they're going after, give a little bit of feedback. The same way I personally feel like we mm -hmm. should be okay to have the PTU right now if we're bored of the, the rest of it. Even if mean... whole chunks are going to be gone later, that doesn't bother me that much. Like the reason I like playing this is I like testing bleeding edge type stuff anyway. Yeah. Right. And so if you, you like if you look at the, the intro, place like two the years first, ago and we're just seeing it now. Yeah. I think like it, it'd be okay for us to see it and see it changing. And just say, hey, here's the new intro. We're not going to spoil any of the story. We just know this is your first area. We're going to let you see the way it is right now. I think that would be really reasonable. And then we could see it grow as we go and and at least have some peace of mind to be like, hey, it is a game. There's things we like about this. We can give feedback. So we feel like we're really part of the process, right? I don't like being cut out of the process when I put this much money into it. I just want a badge that says I survived the elevators of Love Skate. <laughs> <laughs> or, or I like survived that. so much. Dude, yeah. do you guys remember that time where they put the black wall in, in Levski, mm -hmm. but they forgot to reset people's spawn points, so everyone ended up trapped we there if they had that. landed I there? I swear yeah. that oh, is going to be all that's like yeah. almost lore. Escape from lore that will never I get like Escape PTSD exactly. just thinking about it. Like, I hope but it was like it also a really it good time. Should be like a badge. It was mm -hmm. a unique experience. Right. I, I know it's not for everyone, but the same people who can't handle the same people who can't handle the PTU in the state that has been described to me now are the people who are only playing once every six months anyway. So what I just don't know why we're so worried about it. Like it's okay that you're not ready to release it. Buster, you want to go to bed? You want to say something? <laughs> um, there's there's leech patch notes out. We're a little distracted. <laughs> Read the patch notes. Oh, for Evocati. Once? No. Yeah. Okay. There's an M patch for uh, uh, Evocati right now. It's okay. That's just depress me right now. <laughs> but I, I do read them still. <laughs> I um, no, no. I don't know. I'm ready for Squadron. You know, I'm I'm interested in that kind of thing. I. Uh, Sorry, I was also dealing with trying to get my boyfriend to send me something that he needed to send me while we were talking about this, so I was probably a little bit distracted. But um, I also, kind of, I also just realized that, like, our because I, I was interested in it because we were talking about it about Citizen Kong. Bring in KT's uh, microphone. Um, I went to check what? What about my microphone? KT's microphone. What? KT Vertico's microphone. Oh. Talk about all of it. oh, okay. Oh, yes, the uh, the Black Hawk. Black Hawk. Um, <laughs> every time I say uh, it, I feel dirty. Uh, but now I was it actually... is dirty. It's a little dusty right here. Just gotta gotta wipe the dust off just a bit. Go. Honestly, I I actually because like while we were talking about CisenCon, I I was like, you know what, guys? Like I want everybody. I was thinking I'm gonna bring up my 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 place because I'm never gonna get to stay in it, but I want everybody to see how cool it is. And like now, like I'm looking at our Airbnb account and nothing's on upcoming trips. So I think they canceled on us already. So, I mean, that's not a big that's deal. Probably, I hope probably they give us back our money because it was a lot of money. Um, you should probably, you should probably ask for that. <laughs> do what? You should probably ask for that back. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to check in with him and be like, they paid us back. Right. Like, <laughs> cause it's not on our, our upcoming trips like, anymore. Non-refundable, but we are canceling it. Who's this? <laughs> Airbnb. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, looked at mine. I mean, I got a, our place was like 1200 bucks and they said, I have to September 22nd to cancel without penalty. 
Yeah. Well, it looks like he either canceled it or they canceled on us. Uh, but anyway, but yeah, like I'm ready for Squadron. Uh, what is it? We have beta come like we're, it's going to go to beta this later this year in the third quarter, I believe. Um, yeah, I I'm not holding my breath for beta this year. Yeah, I'm neither. I'm I excited, I know you get that. At this point, I'm just trying to I'm trying to set my expectations a little it's bit be a little lower. Bit I can say, yeah, February 2021. Well, and the problem that keeps on happening is whenever they get to these situations where they're close to the end of the year, anything that slips ends up reshuffled a whole nother year. And that's something yeah. that's really, really frustrated me is that they, I feel like they should do these planning meetings that they, they gloat about every quarter. Well, I don't know that that's fair for us to say. I'm okay, as, as someone who manages at... a lot of developers personally, I feel like processes that are important should be repeated more frequently at a smaller scale. But who's to say they don't? I mean, they can't tell us about they, what they do every day. No, no, they've specifically said they just do it once a year. I've watched them talking for multiple hours about the process. But those are like... PI meetings, right? You're not talking about sprints. No, I, I'm I'm talking about the sprints of sprints. I'm talking about the communities coming together and looking at the roadmap more closely together and really making sure that they're still on track. At least once every six months, not once a year. Once a year yeah, has that's proven fair. That's fair. it's proven that it is too infrequent for them to actually realistically have an understanding of what's going to happen in the next six months when they yeah, get to this big confab here. once a year, that's right? Fair. And so, always the big moving items at the end of the year, they inevitably move a whole year, not even they, because the reason they were put at the end of the year was because they were hard, right? And so, it's always that like that long pull in the tent. You're like, yeah, we'll we'll be able to knock it out by then, and. uh you know, hopefully this this staggered development will help them to see these things a little bit better. But I'm concerned that if they keep on waiting a whole year between big planning days, that uh, that we're going to keep on seeing big, really important things slip. Um, but they are working on a lot of the engine core fundamental stuff that they've been like avoiding for a really long time right now. So. So maybe maybe they're doing a little bit better job of actually saying, you know, sure, it's not a ship, uh, but it's important. So we're going to do it. <laughs> what are you guys' thoughts on it? I just want them to make a pretty game that I like. Yeah, me too. And a fun uh, game, not just a... fun game. Make it fun. People will come. People will play. Fun. Because that's always the what? debate. Fun's not allowed. That's always, that's always uh, like I, one I of the debates. Is like people be like... Prison. No parole for involuntary manslaughter. I mean, come on. Whatever. What happened? <laughs> but a three IRL months. But that's the thing though, like, you know, and that's that's kind of another thing is like people come up and they'll say, like, well, you know, that mechanic in the game isn't realistic because XYZ. And it's like, okay, yeah. what's the line between realism and fun? And where is that line? Exactly. And you know, it's like a, it's a hard line. It's a hard it's pretty pretty you know, and some I think in some games it's a it's like a it's probably a very obvious line. I think with a game like Star Citizen, it kind of it's one that they sort Part of dawdle on. Part of the fun on. is the realism, right? <laughs> At least it's been for me. I wouldn't be hooked on this game still if it didn't have the level of detail it did. I would have had fun with it, but once like if you cheese things up too much, then I don't have fun playing it anymore personally. Right. Right. And one of my big worries as we go through, like, I understand it needs to be more fun and it needs to have these things, but I also understand that what I'm asking for may cause this to not be the game for me in the future. Mm -hmm. And that worries me a little bit as someone who's put as much into this game as I have. Like, when, when this comes out of Alpha State and I can't steal NPCs and move them to the wrong locations and I can't, you know just do ridiculous things anymore without getting in trouble. I may not actually like the game anymore. And and that scares me a little bit, but it's also still the right move for them as someone who wants to make a game that's fun and enjoyable for the broader community. And I have to be comfortable with, with that reality. 
uh, as a backer and supporter. So, so like for me, I really want to to push for this continued high level of detail, realism, and feel. But there are certain elements of realism that no one's going to enjoy. And so, like, I'm okay with the fact that that we just magically reappear in a bed after we die if it's within range. Like, that is a huge convenience piece, which some people you know, thought maybe would ruin the game experience, but it's it's opened up a ton of gameplay that didn't really exist before in in a usable fashion, right? Well, you're going to have to gamify it a bit. Exactly. Whether you want to or not, you can't have a 100% realistic game because it's not going to be fun. Nobody suck. plays games because they remind them of the real life. They play games because it allows them to do things they can't do in real life. But I think yeah. Chris does a very good job of consequences have decisions. But mm -hmm. 100% agree with you, G. What do you mean? Decisions have consequences, yeah. Magical yes. reprints in a bed after you die. Uh, Magical. But uh, I will say, Cade, if you read A Death of a Spaceman, it's always been Chris's plan to inconvenience you a little bit less than that. So like when you die, it's always been, you, uh, it's supposed to tell you some time has passed and it fades and it takes you to the nearest station. It, I don't think he ever intended for medical to get past a certain point of inconvenience to the player because I think he understood that having a really long experience of being dead was super inconvenient. Uh, I've also I, I've heard them talk about things like let's say that you get captured and you're put in a prisoner pod. Uh, they they have talked about how that is not going to be a good experience for you to have to be trapped in that for the whole you know 40 minutes to two hours that it takes them to bother to turn you into prison, right? So you would theoretically be in a uh, like you would separately instance out my hope is that if you were caught by a player that once you got in the prison pod if you didn't escape the prison pod within x amount of time that it would take you to prison uh so that you can start dealing with that game loop uh one of the things they talked about was basically giving you a separate instance of yourself and then basically saying well they took they took your your body to prison and now you can you can continue to play the game but i'm a little i'm a little interested in seeing how they decide to do that now that they decided to create physical actual prisons because that was not part of the plan beforehand this is kind of a a surprise move on their side so we'll have to look at the way it happens when we get killed i think the, the idea was that we, when we get killed by the cops that we're going to spawn at the nearest prison right because we were captured and yeah was... there's there's if you die there's going to be someone picked up your body and took you to a medical center if you get killed and you're going to they're going to pick you up and shove you into the back of a cutlass blow and take you to prison mm. there, there's there's lore explanations for all this stuff but they want to they want to sort of explain away some of the game stuff kind of like how eve online kind of explains the respawning system with like oh you're cloned you had your yeah. consciousness implanted into a clone, and this is your new body. But I think they're doing a better job than that. I don't know. We'll see. Mm -hmm. I always felt that Eve was fighting against emergent gameplay, whereas CIG is trying to make sure your decisions have consequences. But we'll see. Yeah, but I think also that we've had the freedom to that they know the resets are coming. I am curious how they'll respond when resets aren't really a thing that they can use as a tool to band-aid That's so far over in the future, things. though. Yeah, yeah that's but, what you're talking like past beta. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious to see if they'll fall into that kind of EVE uh, control dichotomy, though. But uh, Well, they'll have, they'll have many different uh, ways to pull money out of the economy. They can yeah. always ratchet up the amount of pirate interdictions. They can control the wear yeah. and tear. They can slow down the amount of uh, production of power plants and whatnot. So money slowly starts to bleed out of the yeah. economy. I think I think um, Quantum is going to have an amazing impact that's on, just it. on the replayability, is, though. Okay. And I think yeah, that's really, that's going to really it's really totally drive unlike replayability. Eve Online, where I always felt that they were constantly each patch was about. Plugging holes play. like in the, in the dam, putting your finger Thank in the dam, you. kind of thing. Thank you. And but it's manually plugging the holes. I watched you play Eve Online 
Um, I, I stopped playing about five years ago, and then you started what two years a year ago? I saw you playing it, and I almost missed it, but they haven't changed. Almost. Almost missed it. Yeah. No, I played it for a little while during one of the old other dry spells. Um, but you kind of you hit. If you're not willing to engage in a lot of PvP, it seems like you hit a wall on content pretty quickly. I don't even know if it's just PvP. I mean, AC said that at the beginning of tonight's stream. What? If you're not one of us who are really dedicated, you, you'll come in and say, you play for a few hours, and you're like, okay, I've done everything there is to do, and you'll go away until the next patch. Yeah. I recruit. I, I brought a lot of people in from my play group, uh, and yeah, there's there was like a couple people who got super duper duper into it, and then a lot of people who would come in for a day. Yeah, and they'd be like, "Cool, all right, neat. Um, let me know when there's something else to do." Right? I'm like, uh, I don't think there's ever gonna be anything else to do. Eva's been around for a really long time, but then you get yeah. people who like hit that aha moment. And it's just like super super hardcore into it. Yeah. And uh yeah, they're like, Oh, let's make a base and a wormhole and let's do this and that. And I'm like, Well, based on my understanding, it's gonna cause these problems and I really don't feel like dealing with that. Um, and then they did it and, and all the bad things happened, but uh Eve has the benefit of a not as big of a community as we have, maybe, but it's established, right? You have pauses, you can do moon goo, you can Sit in null sec, low sec, whatever you want. It has it's space. Things that people are comfortable with, and they can do the gameplay they want. It's still evolving here. You know, it cracks me up with Eve once in a while. This is kind of it's on topic, but a little off with what y'all are talking about. But one, because I don't, I don't, I don't play Eve. I don't know as much about it as y'all do about it. But um, whenever I see like one of those memes, that's like it'll be like one of those like anti star citizen memes from the Eve community where they're like. Freaky star mm -hmm. citizen, like no originality, and they show a picture of the SRV and I guess a ship that's very similar in shape mm -hmm. to it from Eve, and then like people like from Star Citizen come in and are like, uh, and then they I guess they they slip in a picture of like literally the same to, like you know look of ship from a Chris Roberts game from like the nineties. Sure. Like yeah, apparently yeah. the SRV is like not maybe not the SRV but one of those ships like it was the uh, it was the Vulture. The, yeah, strategy. the vulture. Yeah, and the like, vulture. Is the yeah, like, the like, vulture uh, venture. Yeah, Star Citizen's yeah. copying us, and it's like, well, they copied Chris Roberts. Like, ooh, it's a circuit. Well, one thing it's I don't think you'll here. see in Star Citizen that you see in Eve are these. Mm -hmm. I mean, everybody knows that it resets at a certain point every night, right? And you have these massive battles with capital ships. And you get like where it slows down to like one move every couple seconds. Yeah. Um, I don't know that Chris would ever accept that level of gameplay. No, no, that would that would not long term happen. But but I mean like, but people are so excited that Eve. They're like, oh, glom in here with all of these capital ships, and this is awesome there and well and it's like to them it's it's just part of the game that's been there for so long that it's exactly. like become a and feature no different. right like in star citizen we're all going to find our reasons that we love this game but it's going to be better yeah. yeah no i i think for me the big thing is i never felt like i was actually part of the universe in eve i felt like some weirdo who was like telling some pod dude what to do and I never got to the point where I felt like I was in that ship. Even yeah. barely experiencing, maybe feeling like I was that ship, right? Like, so like for me, Elite Dangerous, you are a spaceship. Yeah, you, it, you, it, you, it, your, your player is the spaceship. Right. Your, your camera attached to your spaceship. That's that's and how Elite Dangerous plays. Eve, Eve is like, I'm a board game that simulates the idea of what space might be like it doesn't you're you're, really... a, you're a disembodied camera out in space yeah. that's watching something else happen or like i'm i'm some like admiral who has super hyper uh space like ability you never get the feeling shit, right like i don't feel ship. like i'm actually there you're one guy and there's hundreds of thousands of people on your ship 
you never get that feeling. No. Yeah, no. And it's like when you look into the lore, you're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Lots of people die whenever I die. Like, uh, do the uh, the angel missions. The angel missions. They talk about how horrible uh, the 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 pod folks are because of their like universal lack of care for regular humans. Hmm. And, and actually, if you read if you read their conversations, they talk about like your wanton murder of everyone who's on the spaceships that you're blowing up on a regular basis because we just got our little feuds but we're always safe we pop out in our pod and uh, choosing to read that actually really like the the lore behind eve is really well developed and i think that's one of the areas that is really strong and the people that actually get into it they actually eve was constructed having five because i multi-boxed having five or six accounts made sense that oh, but that's what I hate about person. it the most. Any yeah. game that drives me to have to play from multiple computers because it's so low depth. And this is going to be the most controversial thing that I'll probably ever say. People are going to hate it. Eve always makes it seem like they they clearly just want to make more money, right? Every company wants to. The CIG and yeah. Eve is no different, but mm-hmm. it was just blatant with Eve. Eve Online is a subscription service. They make money when you subscribe, so if they make it so you have to get more accounts to play Eve, there yeah. they go. Yeah, the time-based thing, having to learn your skills, and I like that. I actually kind of like that it takes time. And, and, oh, and the whole but they can manipulate the timers to make, make it so what? it takes even longer than if you just played the game. It's but, The biggest thing they then, violated was with time, anybody could get better. It wasn't very skill-based. There are things in Star Citizen which are truly skill-based. Like, as mm-hmm. old as I can, as I get, you know, I can't play FPS games anymore. But I can land the hell out of a caterpillar. I can know trading routes. I, um, I think the separation of skill sets is one of its biggest things, right? Yeah. The reason I can't bring people into Elite Dangerous is I can only bring pilots into Elite Dangerous. If you don't want to be a spaceship, you don't want to play Elite Dangerous. That's it. That's like that simple question. Do you want to be a spaceship? Right. <laughs> If they answer, yes, I want to be a spaceship. I'm like, cool, let's go be spaceships together in Elite Dangerous, right? But in, and, and in EVE, I'm be like, do you want to look at spaceships from a long distance and strategically move them on a board? And like, like you know, some people would be like, yeah, that sounds pretty cool. Um, a, a lot of like Stellaris players and stuff, they transition really well into something like EVE because it's a similar, very strategic view. Um, but with with Star Citizen, because it chooses to simulate all of these different careers at a pretty high level, I get people who are like, dude, I don't want to ever fly a spaceship. You're my pilot. And I'll be like, cool. I don't want to ever have to shoot anyone. Let's work together, right? Because they're an FPS player. I Before I started playing Star Citizen, I avoided FPS games, generally speaking. Um, the only reason I, I actually started getting... That's frustration with this game. Right. I started getting good at FPS because I realized I needed to be able to turn around and shoot people who were trying to steal my spaceship. Yeah. And all of a sudden, I cared about FPS. Well, gentlemen, I think we've had a good discussion about Eve Online. <laughs> the hammer's dropped. But we we, uh, we, we are at a point minutes? where we do need to start wrapping up. Okay, so... do we have any questions? We have five minutes. We can answer a question. Come on, sure. come on, come on, come on. Come anybody come has on, a question, question, we have time for one question. One question. One question. Make it a good one, because it's the last there show you... I'm on, or at least the last show I'm hosting, so make it a good question. Question's like, I'm the fuck out of here. <laughs> That's not a question. <laughs> but what are you looking forward to most in 5.0? <laughs> 5. <laughs> 5. <laughs> um, uh, server meshing. Um, the release of the Redeemer. Sexy space alien guys. Yes. Well, I, my hope is server meshing comes before that. So I think five zero, I would I would expect like to actually encounter aliens in combat. I think five zero would be 
the actual release. That's what mm. I've been expecting. Yeah, it's okay. I, I don't know. I, You're I, I, oh I boy, five zero release. That's just next year. Next year, I want to be able to go to like three more solar systems. That that's more aggressive than I probably should be. I I want more places to go Here's and more like. species to encounter. Real gameplay, drones. It, pick one. Not all of these things. Okay. Drones in the Carrick. Real scanning capabilities. Um, salvage repair. Reason to, salvage, salvage repair. repair. <laughs> salvage period. You know, pick a new real gameplay. Give me a reason, not just to put meeple, multiple people on a ship. Give me a reason to want to be an engineer or mm -hmm. a garbage collector or something else. Yeah. That's what need, they need to focus on by the end of 2021. If they haven't done that, they have a real problem. Well, there you go. I said it. What about you? Huh? 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 Buster, you didn't give an answer. Come on. None of those come on. Enticing, Last question. To be honest. Last question. 5 0. What's it going to be for you? Come on. Entertainment gameplay. Okay. It's not on any maps, but it's on my map. How is that like, different like, than what like I said? Like dancing? What? Singing, yeah, bands, entertainment gameplay yeah, like entertain like being able to travel bands across the verse actually having musicians okay 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 yeah like things like that, things like and, that. And, and like moving passengers and and that kind of stuff moving I'd the love moving to talents that'd be awesome moving the talent mm -hmm. around that'd be as cool we say in the, the industry that's me moving the talent on that regard anybody there else go. anybody else got an answer i think it's good we all we all answered. Yeah, I was right? thinking pretty good. Probably pyro yeah. would probably be in before five point zero. Holy shit, we did it go. in time. We still got two minutes, guys. Two minutes. We're amazing. Amazing. <laughs> well, everybody, like I said, it is time for us to start wrapping up. So I will start with Mr. Kai Overt. Kai Overt, tell the people who you are, what you, uh, who he is, what you do, and how to find you. Please and thank you. Uh, so I'm Kai Overt. I swear it sounds so enthusiastic. <laughs> Don't He's want tired. to sound like I rage quit the whole I'm like, I'm He's sorry. Tired. <laughs> um, with the whole COVID thing, though, I think I'm going to be doing uh, IRL streams. And I love woodworking. So it has nothing to do with Star Citizen or any of this crap. Or being a spaceship. Or being a spaceship. spaceship. Mm -hmm. But uh, you'll see me out there just sitting here drinking, talking. Uh, I love board games. You know, Dream Wraith has been in chat. Um, mm -hmm. So you'll see me doing a lot of board games. And one of my New Year's resolution goals, I hate resolutions, was to uh, make a uh, something out of wood and sell it. So I think it's going to be a like Settlers of Catan or something like that. Um, right so, on. Yeah, I'm gonna get some cameras. Nice. I'm gonna set up my wood shop. Yeah, what you guys got going on down there? Is this a yeah. is this around where you normally do the woodwork, or is it like in your garage? It's about I don't know, ten feet to my right. On the other side of that stone wall, you see. Okay. It is a really sophisticated word. I wouldn't shop. That would actually be really cool. So I, that's what yeah. you're going to be seeing me really streaming from now on. If I can get some cameras and stuff together, is um, doing a lot of woodwork. So that's what I'm going to be up to over the next month or so. Right on. Yeah. I think that's nice, though. It's kind of the, the reason I was doing the cabin type stuff. Just get your hands on something real. Right. And anything else, okay, guys, that you need ahead. to know about? Like, no, I have no schedule, no anything. If you it'll just happen don't when it subscribe happens. to me, don't spend your money on me. But <laughs> um, if you see me, definitely set up your notifications. And if you see Kai is doing something, check it out. But don't spend your money you on me. Some stuff. Yeah. Don't spend your money on me, though. All right. Well, Gandor Olaf, what about you, my dear? All right, so so I'm Gantor Olap, and uh, I like spaceships, and I like you guys, and I do play games that don't have spaceships sometimes. So I'm a variety streamer. I stream Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, uh, and uh, and I've been doing. I'll be doing every other night cruise show, 
uh, because I do D and D the other Thursdays. So uh, join me. I've been doing bonus streams because I'm trapped at home, and uh, so we've been doing Banner Lord, we've been doing Star Citizen, we've been doing, you know, Stellaris. I'm mining right now. Right after this, I'm going to be joining Buster. We are going to be flying in space, right, girl? Right, girl? Mm -hmm. We're going to be in space. Mm -hmm. It's going to be fabulous. Um, and uh, if you guys ever want to fly with me, just let me know. Every Tuesday is my Star Citizen day. Um, very, very rarely do I play a different game on Tuesday, only if I'm really, really fed up with Star Citizen. Uh, just that way you know, hey, this is the time that you come. And one thing about me on tuesday is it's always multiplayer you're always welcome to join me if you are new to the game you need someone to hold your hand and train you i will i will meet with you ahead of time make sure we're scheduled up and i will happily train you for a portion of the stream if you're struggling to find your way in the verse so just uh join me and let's have fun together yeah. um, well, thank you, Gandor. And y'all make sure you're following him and Kai on Twitter I mean, and Twitch and Twitter. And also, like I will happily take your money, unlike Kai. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then what about you, Mr. H.C. Virgo? Give it to Gondora. Yeah. Oh, playing Star Citizen as best I can. If it's fun. Today was kind of like a really awful day for it. So we played uh, we to to some Stellaris for a bit. But uh, Mondays is variety streaming for me. But most days, except Saturdays, is Star Citizen. 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. Pacific. Right on. Is that all you got for me? And then you're uh, HC That's Virgo on Twitter. Yep, HC Virgo on Twitch, Twitter, Instagram. YouTube. Doesn't listen to Fine. Instagram. I don't know what the hell I put. What, what do I do with Instagram? What am I gonna put up there? Oh, we I saw him an Instagram account. Maybe I should get a for fans page instead. Oh, that's the thing. <laughs> okay, okay, guys, go. guys, guys. I I promised my six year old I would show the space lizards. Oh he made. yeah, I'm you not. have to show. Okay, these are space his... lizards. He he. Before the show, he's like, "Daddy, I made you lizards," and then he made the face like, "Oh wait, they're space lizards, Daddy. Show them on the show." So <laughs> there's there's the space lizard. Okay, and here's it's actually really space. good. There's another space lizard, and uh, there's like yeah, and then. There you go. I promise. I promised him I I would show the space lizards. There you go. Space lizards. There you go. We did it. They're so cute. All right now. They're so now cute. I can, somebody clip that so I can show it to my six year old. Okay, I'll I'll make sure it gets promise. clipped. <laughs> <laughs> but okay, sorry. That's the thing it's about kids. They assume that you're going to do right by them. Yeah. Try my darndest. <laughs> <laughs> Well, everybody, I am Buster the Destroyer, and this is my last. Uh, this is the last time I'm hosting the Night Crew. For those of you who weren't with us earlier, I I have decided to step away from being the host of the Night Crew, as I have been for this past year. Um, thank you, seriously. Thank ever. Thank you, everybody that's ever come and watched the stream. Everybody that's ever been a guest. Everybody that, from the Night Crew that's ever been on it or worked on it with me in any capacity. Just just thank you, everybody. I've had a lot of fun doing this, but it is time for me to let somebody else do it for a while and let other people, like I said earlier, I, I've, I've taken this show where I can pot, you know, reasonably take it. It's taken me where I can re it can reasonably take me and it's time for other people to, to find new ways for new places to mm -hmm. go to that I, I can't quite find cause I'm, I'm me, I'm not them. So Thank you again for all of your support and your kindness over this last year while I've been hosting this show. And I hope you continue to show that support and kindness to our next hosts, which will like for probably very likely to be in Gandora and somebody else kind of switching off uh, week by week. So thank you so much. I really do appreciate it. And, um, and as far as I uh, like me, my whole thing is, you know, you can find me Buster Destroyer on Twitch. I'm Buster Destroyer on Instagram and Twitter. Keep up with me on Twitter. That's probably the best place to keep up with any like announcements and things like that. You know, I got a Discord. I got all that. We we have a Discord as a night crew. I will be coming and guesting on this show, so I won't be in this slot, but I might be in like Vertigo slot, Gandora slot, Kai mm -hmm. slot. I'll be somewhere, but I am no longer hosting the show as of in a few minutes from now. So, um, with that said, I'm gonna find somebody to raid. Uh, let's find somebody to raid. And thanks for shouting me out in the channel, guys. I I love that mm. somebody took care of me, even though I took care of you. <laughs> I'm so 
such a shithead. All right, let's find somebody to send y'all to. Oh, oh you know what? Nobody knows we'll, about me already. We're going to send Jeez, y'all. You wasted all those letters. <laughs> straight up, I just immediately, I see Sergeant Tickles and I go together right now. I love I go. That bitch is my girl. So we're going to go raid Sergeant Tickles. Normally, we, we would raid another night crew member, but I think I want to raid Sergeant Tickles tonight. Because I see that I goes mm. on and I love her. I love her so much. But anyway, I mean, Sergeant Tickles is cool, but I goes like fucking awesome. <laughs> um, the same me... thing we were just talking about, about like people aren't excited when you work from home to see you because they saw you all day. I goes not always on Tickles' show, so it's really exciting when she I is. was about to type in raid I go command. <laughs> <laughs> oh my Just God. raid I go. Just go right to Sergeant, yeah. Sergeant I Tickles, so. Like... Okay, so the raid command is entered. (laughs) Usually this has been a tradition uh, kind of on and off for a a long time on this show where I just stupidly and randomly sing a song uh, at the end. So I'm going to do it one last time, and I'm going to sing Country Roads. Anybody that wants to join me can feel... feel, Country Roads, take take me home to the place place I I belong. belong. West Virginia, West Virginia. Mountain, Mountain Mama, Mountain Mama. Mountain. Take, me yeah. take me home, <laughs> country roads, <laughs> all my memories <laughs> gather <laughs> round her, mine is lady, lady, stranger to stranger blue water, water. <laughs> dark and Life dusty, dusty. Painted, painted on, on the, the sky. 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 I don't Misty remember the taste of moonshine. Moonshine, <laughs> teardrops in, in my eye. Take country roads. We're like, we're back to the country roads. Take me home. To the place. To the place. I belong. West Virginia. Mountain Mama. Take me home. Take me home. Country Country Rose. Rose. Have a good night, everybody. Bye. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my. That was kind of fun. Uh, That was fun, though. (laughs) That was fun. All right.